welcome to Once More With Feeling, Patreon request time. Doing one of these things for the first time ever, covering Steve Martin and the Steep Canyon Rangers, the long-awaited album. That's right, Steve Martin! Yes, that's Steve Martin. <laughs> Hello, I'm Steve Martin. <laughs> oh, if only. Or somebody along those lines, yes. You see, I go from channel to channel, TV to TV, YouTube channel to YouTube channel, and no, this is not really Steve Martin, but it's a really good try. <laughs> it's a really awful attempt, actually. Really terrible attempt. This is, in fact, Bearded Misfit here on YouTube, here uh, to ruin Edmund's life. Just, just ruin it. I'm here to ruin it. That's all there is to it. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> So, uh, Sparky, uh, what are, what are we covering today? We're, uh, we're, we're recording and stuff over here on, uh, on, uh, the long-awaited album here, right, by the Steve Martin and them, uh, Steve and them Steep Canyon Rangers? Yeah, we're, uh, we're here to talk all about it, you know, just, uh, have a little bit of fun, you know, and, uh, talk about some music and, uh, and, uh, possibly tickle some wiglets. Or what's a, what the hell's a wiglet? I, I got myself stuck in a corner. What the hell? What the hell's a wiglet? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> yeah, part of the Patreon request thing is that the Patreon gets to join in as the guest co-host. <gasps> this is for multiple reasons. One is to prevent an echo chamber of opinion, as is often the risk when it comes to when me and Pierce are covering albums because our opinions match up quite dramatically. The other reason is because I want to actually get the Patreon's opinions recorded for posterity, that sort of thing. We have no opinions. <laughs> and the other reason is it means that I don't have to worry so much about Pierce being free, because as people will know if they've listened to the clusterfuck, he has barely any time! <laughs> Well, as it turns out, I have all the time in the world for two or three minutes at a time. Uh, that made no sense. <laughs> but yeah, I can completely understand uh, trying to convince people to show up when you've asked them to show up so many times. <laughs> it can be quite difficult, so I completely understand that. So no, I'm here to make Edmund cry today. And we're going to be listening to, or at least talking about, a considerable number of uh, songs I showed him. He had never heard of them before. So he dove into this album uh I think quite terrified initially, but after a few after a few moments, I think I showed him something he now loves. <laughs> um, well, it was one of those because you described it as country album. I was sort of like, okay, this could go one of two ways. It's either going to be really great, or I'm going to end up drawing a bath and carrying the toaster in with me. <laughs> Now, 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 you don't use the toaster anymore because that's inappropriate. It's against toaster kind. <laughs> Instead, you have to bring in the blender. <laughs> blender, no one likes blenders anymore. Blenders are out. Toasters are in. So you can't kill yourself with a, with, a, with a toaster anymore. You have to use the blender. It's a requirement by law now. If you actually look, well, you guys have, you know, you guys don't have the constitution. So, you know, you obviously you haven't amended that particular thing. But I've heard, I've heard that your conservative group is in fact pushing for that. I've heard. I could be wrong, but I've heard. Apparently the toaster monarchy is now winning. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, God. This is just going to go off the rails so often. Anyways, so, album. Yes, that's what we're talking about. That's what we're here for, is the album. Yes, that's that thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, the thing is, I, I'm perfectly familiar with Steve Martin. I mean, I grew up watching things like uh, Little Shop of Horrors, and yes, he is in Little Shop of Horrors. He's killing kids with a baby gun. Oh, not kids, cats, baby dogs, something like that. Anyways, but yeah, good stuff. It's a shoot a puppy with a baby gun. There we go. Yeah, shoot a puppy with a BB gun. And then after that, uh, or uh, I can't remember. It's been forever since I've actually watched the movie. But yeah, he's on the motorcycle. He's talking about doing really horrible things like pulling pulling wings off flies. Good stuff from Steve. But then he also, like, the reason why I ever found out he was into music in the first place is back when he was on SNL, he did the banjo guy, where he'd come out on a banjo and he'd be sitting there in front of the crowd and you know, usually he would have, you know, his nice white suit on and he'd start playing his banjo and he would say things along the lines of like, you know, with a banjo, you can, nothing you say ever sounds sad or depressing. Like you can come up here and you can be like, 
pestilence and and disease and decay and war and death as he's sitting there just throwing away on his banjo and it's way too upbeat concerning what he was saying which was you know part of the whole joke so that's as far as i knew he got into a music career i never heard of this band before you know that he had actually started a band i think what was it 98 he's had this thing forever um so after he got started with this, they had some success, but I never heard of them at all until they released this album. Um, he went up on live television on uh, let's see, what actually a couple different uh, a couple different late night hosts over here in the states, and they played Caroline, which is the second uh, second track on this album, and I was blown away. The whole thing, just the whole time, I was just giggling and laughing because you don't expect to hear Steve Martin talking about, you know, Tinder dates and stuff. You don't expect that. Or complaining about, like, if you upload, like, pictures of your new boyfriend on Facebook, I'll be broken to pieces. You don't expect that from someone who's now pushing, like, 70, 72. Mm. So it's interesting to hear him talking about that in a funny, upbeat way because it's still Steve Martin. Yeah, that's one of the things that did make me go okay however this is going to turn out it will be interesting because i couldn't imagine steve martin going all serious i don't think i've ever seen him in a fully serious role yeah nothing comes to mind as far as for steve martin a serious role yeah there was never a moment like philadelphia where you know he's sitting there dying of like aids or anything like that not trying to crack jokes but instead trying to present a serious topic it's usually just him with two brains cackling maniacally chasing people down the street with a hammer that's the kind of person he is <laughs> i mean the closest to a serious role i can think of is possibly how planes trains and automobiles pans out yeah because it wasn't really him being silly he was the he was the everyday normal guy presented with ridiculous situations he was essentially leslie nielsen yes where he himself was trying to be very deadpan with his delivery and not over the top and john candy was the one who was completely insane <laughs> which is what john candy did best so it was perfect yeah so let's see uh what were your favorite tracks on this what, what did you love most about this album it was mainly the instrumental tracks so um okay I, I really liked uh, Office Supplies and So Familiar. So I, I did actually get kind of the feel from Office Supplies of someone who was every so often nicking something from the... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that's great. <laughs> Having done work experience in an office, I can actually imagine sort of every so often you sneak some elastic bands or some pens off the desk or a few post-it notes here and there so the things that people won't miss and then one day you, you want to try your luck and then you steal one of the filing cabinets oh jeez so the question i have for you now is have you personally seen office space yes see now you've got me got me thinking that you're now actually the gentleman with the red stapler that's who you are now making me think you are <laughs> <laughs> you're in the corner you're trying to nick everything and then claim that it's yours and then eventually burn the place down because they took back what was rightfully theirs oh god it's my red stapler my red stapler that's who you remind me of right now that's very disturbing but i do agree the instrumentals were very nice i did like the instrumentals they're not my favorite bits um because because country bluegrass is nice i like a lot of i like a lot of the instruments and whatnot but what really stuck out to me was when his comedy comedy chops came out like Caroline was, of course, the, the one we mentioned earlier. Canadian Girl was nice, but not really too funny. Um, Strangest Christmas Yet was hilarious. Yeah. It was essentially National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation brought forth in music form. You know, where you've got everything ranging from guys who are walking around with their bathrobes and only their bathrobes, but they're open in the front, to a guy who's trying to sing Joy to the World, but has forgotten all of the words, so the only thing he can remember is Joy to the World, and he says it like nine times in a row, to, you know, gun nuts thinking that aliens are going to come down and steal all their stuff, to everything else in that song. And I loved it to death. It was one of my favorite songs in the album, because it made me crack up every time I heard it. Mm. Nights in the Lab was a good romantic story that was still also quite hilarious. That kind of stuff. That was my favorite bits from this album. Yeah, I, I did really like Nights in the Lab because it's one of those things that kind of, it feels kind of real. Because <laughs> you do get situations like that where it's just, oh, okay, we're, we're working alone and... Yeah. <laughs> yes. 
I mean, the point where my ears did perk up is when you've got lines like no gorillas in the mist working side by side like this. It's sort of like, wait, what? <laughs> That's actual terminology, too. So it's it's the kind of thing that you if you've ever seen. Oh, what was the name of that movie where they were try, where they were in the Amazon? They were trying to figure out the cure for cancer. And, and it ends up actually being the ants, not Medicine Man. Medicine Man. That was it. Yes. That was one of those ones where I, I first heard the term gorillas in the mist was because they kept try, they kept having, you know, things basically corrupting the results mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So, yeah, that was that was where I first heard that line. So when I first when I heard that in the song, I was dying hysterically with gorillas in the mist. I started chuckling and stuff. And for an FYI, for anybody who's never heard of me, uh, which is quite possible, <laughs> um, I drive Uber and Lyft. And I like to play music for my for my passengers. And I was playing this album for a very large number of people. And every single time that this song would come on, and I would hear hear lines such as you know uh, you know no gorillas in the mist and things like that, I was I would start cackling. And no one caught on to it at first, except for one person who had already listened to the album. It was dying along with me. So there are a few fans of this album. Not a lot, but there are a few. And when it does happen, there's just this like joyous experience where both of you are in on a joke that no one else knows and has never heard before. It's it's an incredible feeling. It's one of those ones where you're like, I am now a hipster. <laughs> That's all there is to it. I have become a hipster. I am now the thing I always hated. I am the thing I was always afraid of. I am now a neckbeard hipster. Ugh. Where's my fedora? <laughs> well, in all fairness, I kind of regard it as being sort of the anti-hipster because if you were a hipster, you would be trying to prevent other people from learning about this album. But you're actively trying to let people in on the joke. So it's... No, nobody listen to this album. No one share joy. No one do anything. No one's allowed. This is my album and my album alone. No one else can listen to Santa Fe, Caroline, all night long. Canadian girl. <gasps> office, spa office space? Yes, office space. Now the song. <laughs> Office supplies. Bad night. Strangest Christmas yet. Always will. So familiar. Nights in the lab. Angela and sorry, Angeline the barista. Angeline. Angeline. Anyways. On the water. Girl from the her girl from River Run, which is also another great song, which ends up so gently warm in the heart. And finally, Promata Prom Pro Whatever the hell it's called, point. Anyways. <laughs> promontory point there we go that's the word i was like i can't even speak the english tell me how to speak it mr british boy the only reason i know that word is because i i kind of spent a while trying to memorize one of the soliloquies from hamlet and it mentions a promontory and so that word is embedded in my mind in your mind little one in your mind <laughs> Yeah. Um, there are a couple of songs I'd probably have cut because they kind of faded into the background a little bit for me. All right, which ones would those be? Uh, Bad Night and Always Will. They kind of they kind of passed me by a bit. They're not bad songs. They're just I liked Always Will. Always Will was nice. Um, I agree. Bad Night was kind of a meh song. Mm. Um. Let's see. I did like those. Yeah, I think I think Bad Night's the one that's just kind of like it's filler more than anything. It's just filler. It's just there to just kind of pass the pass the time and make the make the record just a little bit longer. And they probably should have either put that one back in the oven for a little bit longer and come up with some other hooks, or just just cut it one or the other. Yeah, maybe release it as a bonus single or something like that. Or like that bonus track, you know, hidden track number fourteen. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything else I would have cut, though. I mean, I really liked all the other ones, like All Night Long, Santa Fe is a good opener. Mm. Um, let's see, Office Supplies was good, Always Will is good, uh, So Familiar is another one that's nice. Uh, Nights in the Lab, of course, we've already mentioned that. On the Water was, no, it was kind of okay. The Girl from River Run, you had no idea where it was taking the story, in my opinion, because I was... I was thinking it was going to go like sharp left turn at some point and end up, end up in Crazyville. And instead it ends up being a rather sweet love song, which is actually a nice, nice touch. Mm -hmm. And they could have actually ended it there, but instead they decided to throw that last song in. And I usually just don't care about that last one. So I guess that last song in the album wasn't necessary in my opinion. The, yeah. I'd say Promontory Point is good as a just a sort of wind down kind of song. I mean, it's only, what? Well, yeah. 
just over a minute long. So it's it's a nice warm down kind of thing. It's just sort of easing you out of the album. I do have a preference for albums ending with instrumentals. You know, just short instrumentals to go, okay, we're, this is our just bye-bye, we're off now. So, you, so you're not a fan of the Weird Al 12 minute long ending songs, correct? Because oh. <laughs> I'm a genius in France, genius in France, genius in France. Nothing like that, you know, that goes on for 12 fucking minutes. It, oh, I'm in two minds there. I mean, I like Genius in France and Albuquerque, but... <laughs> or Trapped in the drive through or... Uh, trapped in the drive through I kind of find myself getting bored. <laughs> it's kind of the point! <laughs> it's completely just mind-numbingly boring intentionally. <laughs> uh, it's a definite shift from a nice soft instrumental like this i'll i'll, I'll give you that because mm. i don't want to steer us too far that we're now in weird owl theory because i accidentally did that here and i'm trying to pull this back in for a second but i do understand the desire for a soft exit there's plenty of albums that have done that and then as i said there's the ridiculous over the top oh my god i have to now go on with a story that no one cares about for way longer than a stay was welcome yeah here you go. Here's 20 minutes of me just drooling in the microphone. Ah! <laughs> well, that's basically most Cradle of Filth albums. <laughs> I think that's the entire album, though, from right from start to finish, is just screaming. Well, yeah. It's like the number 12 looks like you. The number 12 looks like you has two fuckers who just stand there and just scream. And, oh god, at some point, if you've never listened to them, take some migraine medication and then listen to Number 12 Looks Like You. Because <laughs> some of it's audible to the point where you can actually understand what they're screaming, but most of it's just two men screaming at each other at full blast. <laughs> and there's no way to really come down from that. It's not like the last, the last song of the album could be like, alright, we've just spent the last 20 minutes or 30 minutes, or in this case, 60 minutes screaming at each other. Let's now have a nice soothing and soothing outro no it's just it was just shrieking at full blast and then it just cuts because reasons <laughs> i make the joke about cradle of filth but they're one of my favorite bands so it's all sort of like oh god why edmund why oh there are so many better bands than cradle of filth oh god damn british people obviously british people are into terrible music that must be the only excuse i can come up with that's the only excuse it's just in terrible music because of because of where you live it's just because of the the clouds and the island and the lack of anything other than filtration <laughs> filtration organs is food i mean that that's it that's the entire explanation well you've heard the beatles right Hey -o! Yeah, I, I've heard things about them, but I don't really don't know who don't know who these beetle people are. I think I th aren't they like subterranean creatures who came out and like shrieked in the microphone and changed music forever? Something like that. <laughs> uh, see, we stole them from you, though. We stole the Beatles. They became Americans. That's the difference. If they had stayed British, they would have been over there just you know singing about octopus and gardens and stuff. Yeah, but that's when they were cool. <laughs> I like we I like their weird stuff. This is why I can't stand most Pink Floyd stuff, because most of their stuff of Drama Gumma is just bland prog rock bullshit. And I do like my prog rock, but I like my weird prog rock. This is why I can't stand most post Peter Gabriel Genesis. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on. No, I, I agree. Some of their better stuff is the silly stuff. And I'll admit, if someone's never heard that song, which it's hard to do, but you can still find a few fuckers who've never heard that song, take them to karaoke, throw them up there on stage, and have them sing Octopus's Garden. The facial expressions they will have when they go, wait, this is Beatles? <laughs> Because, you know, all, everyone's always heard, you know, the usual stuff. Yeah. They've heard all the, all the really popular stuff. Another really fun one is Maxwell's Silver Hammer. If you get them to sing that in karaoke and they've never heard it before, they will never... They, no one expects the Beatles to have come up with a song about a serial killer. So... <laughs> It's moments like that that are just great to watch people's reaction when it comes to, oh my god, my idol band that I love to death sang a song about killing people. Like wholesale. What the fuck? So that's kind of that's kind of what happens when you just put people in a situation where they've never heard something that they love, 
and you show them the crazy side of what they love. I mean, there's a lot of bands out there who've done that. And now we know how Charles Manson happened. <laughs> oh, God. Don't bring up Manson. Don't bring up Manson. I'll be forced to talk about Trump. Don't, don't bring up Manson. He retweeted. He retweeted somebody talking about how Charles Manson started the, started the far right movement. He retweeted them. Or he retweeted somebody else who was talking about how that was a good thing. You know, his base. He retweeted a tweet about just no, no, no. The President of the United States should not be retweeting anything about Charles Manson being a hero. That is not what you should see the President of the United States condone. No. And we are now so far off to off track at this point, I don't know if we could ever get back. I think this is where we should end the episode and just, just hang, and our, hang our heads in shame at this point, because there's no there's no coming back from this moment. You you dropped the Charles Manson thing, and there's no way to come back from this. We're, we're so politically charged at this point. Because apparently serial killers who kill people are now part of politics. Oh, God. <laughs> well, speaking of crazy people who could be serial killers, back to Steve Martin. Yes! Back to Steve Martin. The craziest of all the crazies. A man so insane, he went on, sta went on stage and told jokes. That, that That's pretty crazy. Well, to be fair, most it's kind of weird how the correlation between mental illness and comedians is there's a bizarre it, it's not even a um venn diagram it's just a circle <laughs> most of the time yeah it seems that anyone who has emotional like impediment as a child seems to be quite good at comedy either they just touch that particular part of the ethos inside the brain or they're just insane and as, society, as such, they could just present things in a completely ridiculous manner. Well, it is said that comedy is tragedy plus time, so... Yeah, pretty much. I mean, take a look at our childhoods. Oof. You grew up as a British person, and I grew up as an American who had a really horrible childhood. So say we're both able to be funny. That's right, I'm going to keep insulting your Britishness, just because it's funny to me. <laughs> Do you think he's going to actually listen to this? Do you think Steve Martin will actually sit down and listen to this and go, Wow, I've reached some very strange people, and I kind of regret my life choices leading up to this. Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if Steve Martin never listens to this, then thank you. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Not like, oh my god, would you reach out? Because I don't care. You know, If you reach out to us, cool. If you don't, then I completely understand. I will be seeing if I can tweet it to him. After listening to this, I'm sure he'll probably be running for the hills. Yeah. But no, um, his body of work is incredible. Uh, he's one of the more more established comedians since, you know, stayed in the game forever. Yeah. Absolutely ever. So because of that, you know, having... Being able to prove that he's able to do stand-up, that he's able to do, uh, you know, traditional comedy, both in both in film form. I believe he's also an accomplished, uh, you know, accomplished in theater. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a band as well. He's been all over the map. So to say that he's succeeded is an understatement. You know, he he comprised a lot of what I consumed as a, as a young adult and child in both comedy form. Yeah. Uh, a lot of his old, uh, a lot of his old skits on like SNL and different places like that. Uh, a lot of his, a lot of his older movies were things I grew up with, like The Jerk and stuff like that. Mm. So yeah, just being able to just sit back and listen to this from from time to time, kind of in a way reminds me of my my childhood, just listening to you know the crazy man on stage because that's basically what he's doing here. The difference is, is he's got an instrumental background. And that he's involved in. And that's cool. That's why I love this album. That's why I had to share it with you. Because once I heard it, I was like, this is the thing. This is what I want as your first Patreon thing. Is by God, Edmund, sit down and listen to a crazy old man sing songs. Yeah. And um, I happily enjoyed... Happily enjoyed. That's a bit tautologist, but whatever. <laughs> I was gonna say, don't start crying. Now. That's that's not the right way to go about this, you know. Don't, 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 don't go full British. Just go three quarters British. <laughs> Never go full British. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to this. Oh God. <laughs> I tried to warn you that I'll be way off topic all the time, so you may have to make massive cuts to this, or you can just leave it intact as the most ridiculous episode you've ever done. Your call. I leave the ball in your court. Um, it's probably not the most ridiculous episode, but it's up there. <laughs> um, I, I, 
I, I thank you. I, I don't really know where to go with that. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, I suppose final thoughts on the albums or rating and whatnot. Um, Ooh, this is always a tough one. Yeah. Where I come down on it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I, I'd i be inclined to say it's all in the 3.54 sort of ballpark. All right, out of five stars, correct? Yeah. Just so we're, just so we're on the same page. Um, I think I'd go a little bit higher than that. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a big country fan. Uh, you'll notice most of my taste typically ends up in like metal and I mean that kind of, that's basically how we met was because we both love the same metal band yeah so to say that bluegrass country is not my usual forte is an understatement so when it comes to an album that I can then reach over grab and throw in and start listening to with no issues that speaks volumes mm-hmm. so I don't know if it's purely because of the fact that you know it has one of my favorite comedians happens to just be part of the flagship concept but I'd put this at a four, a nice solid four. I can easily listen to it. It's not going to be a thing I'm going to listen to all the time unless, you know, I'm feeling like being kind of a jerk. But it's the fact that I can reach out, throw it in there. It has no foul language. Very little, very little of the time is there any adult material and described even. Mm. A couple times in like, say, Strange Christmas, yet they do happen to mention various genitalia, but it's not in a vulgar sense. It's just simply to explain visually what you're expected to see. And that's nice. It means I can I can throw it in there for my passengers. I can listen to it on my own. I never have to worry about it if there's a youngster around because there's never any fearful. There's never any moment where I'm thinking to myself, oh crap, I can't let this be on because of blank. Yeah. That's not the case. So it's a nice, clean, fun album. I always have a grin on my face whenever I listen to it. I'm usually singing full blast and I have like Caroline in there. And I'm just singing just really loudly and scaring neighbors. <laughs> so it's it's that kind of an album. I love it to death. And I never feel like it gets old. Mm. It's not the one I'm going to reach for all the time. So it's not a five. But it never gets old. So I'd say it's at least a four. That's fair. Um, I think ultimately it's a great album if you've wanted to look into sort of more comedy oriented music. But don't want to go full force. Yeah, this is not your traditional country album of like, you know, it's 4 a.m. and I got my dick stuck in this cow. It's, <laughs> it's much more upbeat, nowhere near as annoying kind of country album, which let's face it, most country albums don't qualify for that. Usually it's, my sister ran away with my dog and my cat and she took my car. <laughs> And it turns out she's also pregnant with her brother. <laughs> that's that's country, in my opinion, which is precisely why this is such an unusual album for me. I thought of a good comparison. It's kind of like when Johnny Cash would do more humorous songs. Fair enough. You know, like A Boy Named Sue. Yeah. Okay, I, I can I can get down behind that. It's sort of like it's not quite as jokey as that sort of thing, but it's it's humorous. It's very light-hearted. It's got a nice sort of traditional country sound which is one of the things that's a major problem with a lot of country these days where it's country music is more like rap but with a slightly different sound at the moment yeah that's why i usually just don't get behind any of that because it's just not my forte so no that's yeah yeah that's that's final thoughts for me is it's just it's an easily accessible album for practically anybody i mean the bar of entry is really low Everybody, after about two or three seconds into a song, will either be really into it or really not. Mm. It's not one of those, I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. It's pretty polarizing. It's going to be one or the other. Within a matter of seconds, you'll know if this is the right album for you. Yeah, uh, I fully encourage everyone to check this out. And it'll be interesting to see what this combination next produces. I'm also interested in listening to some of Steep Canyon Ranger's other stuff, just to see what it's like. Yeah, see, I haven't even had the guts to go back and try the other ones, just because I love this one so much. It's like, crap, they haven't done an album in forever. Should I go back and listen to the old stuff? What if it's terrible? Oh god, what am I going to feel then? Am I going to feel like this album's even either more, even more incredible, or am I going to bury this album in my psyche because of the scarring? <laughs> when it comes to music, you really do have to take everything on an album-by-album album case. It's like, um, I'm still a Metallica fan, but I'm... Sorry. I just, anytime I hear the word Metallica, my mouth fills with, like, horse semen. It's not a pleasant experience. What? <laughs> I hate Metallica. Like, I, I liked him as a kid. Mm-hmm. But, like, I can't even listen to, like, Enter Sandman anymore. It's just, 
uh, it's just not metal to me anymore. And I I don't like listening to classic metal. I can't get into old old metal. I just can't do it anymore. When it comes on, my brain immediately goes, Turn it off! It's not summoning Satan strong enough! Mm. So yeah, it's like having a horse semen in my mouth. It's just there's no desire for it, and I kind of wanted to use a steel brush on my mouth afterwards. Fair enough. Um. <laughs> Sorry for the graphic image, but that's pretty much where my brain goes at this point now with like old metal. I just can't do it. You know, it just feels, it, honestly, it feels like, it, it just feels like there's no power behind it. There's no strength. There's no, no effort. It just, it feels, it feels like a bunch of just really old people playing crappy guitars. And I feel like a poser now. I, I feel like you're deflecting all the flack that I would get for my comments about Pink Floyd. <laughs> Pink Floyd is a masterpiece, and you're a bastard for saying otherwise. No, I understand. No, like like almost any music, I can understand if someone doesn't like it. That's fine. They don't have to like it. They don't have to dislike it. I know plenty of people who still love like Slayer and Metallica, you know, and like Iron Maiden. Mm. That's fine. That's that's up to you. That's perfectly up to you. I don't care. But do understand that if you put something old on there, I will leave the room. Because it'd be like, no, no! And I can understand if you feel the same way about, like, Pink Floyd. I love the shit out of Pink Floyd. I'm not going to expect you to just come over and, like, sit down next to me and cuddle me while we listen to Pink Floyd. If it's on and you don't want to be around it, then that's fine. You can leave. Or I can swap it to something else. Like, like the long-awaited album by Steve, <laughs> Steve Martin and the Steve Kenny Rangers. <laughs> Steve Martin, support the channel. Give us money. <laughs> Just kidding. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> um, I suppose as a wind down, you can advertise your channel and do all that sort of thing. For those of you who would like strange and unusual content that does not ever seem to appear, please check out my channel, Bearded Misfits, on YouTube. If you'd like to watch me stream once every five or six decades. Also, check me out on <laughs> One True Mouse on twitch.tv forward slash the one true mouse. Anyways, um, I will be putting up more content on my channel, but I've been quite busy with work and my girlfriend and other projects that never really seem to come to fruition. So um, stay tuned. That's the best way I could go about that. <laughs> Oh, we'll get there eventually. Something like that, yeah. I have a Twitter that no one ever checks, so don't worry about my Twitter. We'll just we'll just nod and smile and go, Yes! The social medias! They're so good today! <laughs> wow, the crazy eyes! Anyway. I'll be posting the relevant links in the description, all that good stuff, so... Ooh, description. Tell me, tell me, Edmund, what are you wearing right now? What are you wearing? <laughs> Alright, I'll stop. Probably. Hey, yeah. Uh, that's it for this episode. Next episode is probably going to be more of the clusterfuck because I'm just, I'm able to get those episodes up fairly quickly because each bit is only like 10 to 15 minutes and the editing is very dum, 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 dum. So. Yeah, in comparison to how I'm sure this is going to be an absolute wonder to go back and have to try to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> Clean it up because I'm sure that it's going to be just a little different um weird strange as it for this episode it's goodbye from me goodbye from my Night in the